Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're gonna be covering 12, you heard that right, 12 new builds in 7.34. Honestly, all of these builds are relatively new, if not all of them, or they're buffed in a significant way. I'm actually excited to talk about all these new builds because I'm gonna keep it very concise, mainly focus on the items and how to play the new heroes, maybe a little bit why they're good now. And then after that, hopefully you guys will have a pretty clear idea of how you can dominate your pubs with these 12 new builds. All right, but without further ado, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's get into it. Also, if you guys are interested in more 7.34 content and want to get a jump on the patch over on the Game League website, it's currently 50% off, but over on the Game League website, I'm going to be making a ton of content, basically talking about the new builds that you can go, the new heroes you can try, and all the new strategies you can use for this new patch. So if you're interested in that, this is the time to sign up. This is currently 50% off. All you got to do is use the code SUMMER in the checkout. And yeah, hope to see you guys there. Click the link down below and let's get back into the video. All right, so getting into the first build is one of the most buffed heroes of the patch. And it's kind of funny because at first glance, I didn't think much of this change. If you don't know what happened with Ricky, this hero got honestly bizarre changes. To sum it up simply, he lost base damage, but gained agility. And what my friend told me, who I was playing with yesterday, is that this gave him bonus attack speed early on. Uh, it didn't change his base damage or his base armor because of what they did, but it did give him a lot of attack speed. It also gives him a little bit more damage at level 6. At least, uh, that's what it seems to be the case. And what he did on Ricky is he went Wand, Wraith Ban, after that, Rain Drops, Treads, after Treads, Battle Fury. Yeah, so you're going to focus on farming and hitting a later timing, which might seem a little bit weird because it's like, oh, you got this agility buff. Maybe you should go more agility items. But no, it gives you more attack speed. You can build flat damage items and farm a little bit faster. It actually is better at farming now. And then from there, you go Diffusal Blade. After that, Manta Style, then Aghanim Scepter, then Daedalus. There's some variation you can go to this. For instance, you don't have to go Manta, nor do you have to go Diffusal. You can just kind of go something like one or the other, or you can go... Uh, Battle Fury straight into Ags, into Daedalus, but generally I recommend going Battle Fury into Diffusal. That's because it's going to allow you to have impact in the early game and get kills. But yeah, the hero is up 5% win rate. No joke, it's the second highest win rate hero in all of Dota right now. Uh, I'm not kidding. And so, yeah, it's definitely a hero to keep in mind. Reiki is certainly powerful now. All right, if you want a support build, I'm going to go quick on this one because not too much changed about this hero, but I do think it's quite good, and that is Vengeful Spirit. Venge got 10 base attack speed, which made her poor laning stage a little bit better, and now when you have maxed out Wave of Terror, it steals 30%, you heard that right, 30% of their total damage. I mean, that is an incredible number. Right? And, and it's total damage. So if you don't understand, there's three types of ways they describe damage. Base damage, which is the first number, it's the gray one. Added damage, which is the green one. And then total damage, which is the combination of the two. And so total damage is the best one. Venge steals 30% of the total, meaning she counters God Strength Sven. Kind of bizarre, right? But that's what it is. So it's very powerful against high right click comps. And the build I recommend you going is some sort of physical damage amp build. While I do think the Ags is solid, I think just amping physical damage and playing around Wave of Terror being OP, maxing out Magic Missile, then maxing out Wave of Terror, then eventually going back to the passive, maybe a value point in passive at level 3 or level 4 is okay, or probably level 4 is when you can skill up the passive, uh, but then buying Solar Crest and Drums and amping your team's physical damage. All right, the next one I'm really excited about because I genuinely think it's kind of OP. This hero can be played as a support or a core, and no joke, it's going to be crazy to hear this. This is the third highest win rate on Dota buff right now, and it is Witch Doctor. Witch Doctor is the third highest hero in Dota. Why? Well, I'll explain why. Two major changes. Death Ward is now pure. Previously, Death Ward was physical, meaning as the game progressed and people got armor, Death Ward didn't do crap. It didn't scale at all. Now, it scales incredibly well because it's pure damage. On top of that, the shard is pure damage. And on top of that, they made it where the stun, instead of bouncing every 0.3 seconds, right, it would have a delay, it now bounces every 0.1. So if heroes are pretty spread out, it will still chain stun them. It does mean it's technically like slightly worse if they're directly on top of each other, but how often would that happen? Now it's a permanent chain stun even if they're like quite a bit units away. And that's huge, right? It gives you the ability to be actually somewhat of a hard stun on two heroes 
even if they're just not that close. It's damn good. And so yeah, Witch Doctor's been a good hero. Like, it's been good. I've been saying it in videos, and now it's just really good. So if you want a core or support to play, this is the hero to play. Now, what is the build? I recommend maxing stun and maxing heal. There are some players who will suggest maxing Maledict, and I get the logic, but I think the problem with maxing Maledict is you don't get you don't get to take advantage of this pretty broken stun. If you're playing core Watch Witch Doctor, you have to take the stun because it allows you to farm. It one-shots creep camps because it does bonus damage to creeps. So your stun is what allows you to farm, right? It will one-shot creep camps. The heal is what allows you to be tanky, sustainable, and just an absolute nuisance. And you might be asking, can I just go stun and Maledict? You can, but I don't really recommend it as I think it makes your hero kind of weird and not great when stun is on when the stun is on. On cooldown. So I'm not a huge fan of that build. If you're gonna play Core Witch Doctor, here's the build. You start with Magic Wand, three branches, then you go Tangos, then Mana Boots. After Mana Boots, you go Soul Ring. After Soul Ring, you go Pavis or Holy Locket. And then from there, you buy your shard almost as fast as you can. And uh, basically, the items after that is whatever you desire, whatever's gonna make you tanky. That could be a Kaiosange, that could be a Pipe, that could be a Blink Dagger if you want to get in range for good stuns. It could go Ags if you really think the Ags is gonna cook, right? The, the AoE Death Ward's gonna cook. You can go that route. It's really, really fun as a support and a core and definitely a hero I recommend you look into. So hands down, one of the most broken heroes in Dota right now, and it's crazy that the hero's win rate isn't higher. I guess because it was low, right? It didn't really receive as much as a buff as people might think, but even the win rate didn't shift as much as it should. The win rate is currently 2.78% more, and that's on Invoker. But this hero's broken. I'm not even, I really don't even want to cover all the reasons why. I'll just cover a few. It's universal. Spirit Vessel, one of Invoker's favorite items, builds from two crowns, meaning in the laning stage, you can just have like 90 damage super early because you're buying components to Spirit Vessel, an item you wanted to buy anyway. And this is on Wex Invoker, a hero that would have typically kind of low damage. Now you just buy crowns and magic wand and a bracer if you want it, and you can just have a bajillion damage. It's nuts. So that's the first thing. From there, Ghost Walk gives you HP and mana regen. At max level, it gives you 40. Why in the world can you Ghost Walk around on a reduced cooldown, by the way, they buffed the cooldown. You can walk around on a reduced cooldown with 40 mana regen and a ton of HP regen. You just full heal in between fights. I'm not kidding. It's like you have a half regen in between fights. Sunstrike does 200 pure damage at level one now if you want to go exhort, right? Cold Snap's stronger. It's like crazy. This hero just got so many damn buffs. I really think it's going to be one of the top meta heroes, especially as people flesh out the build. And what do I think the build is? Well, I think the build is going to revolve somewhat around just being tanky and being a nuisance in your early game. The first item is going to be a vessel, no doubt. Uh, if you're going Exhort, you could go Midas, but I think going like a stat based build is the way to go. So it's going to be a vessel. Then after that, maybe treads. Then, uh, then you can go something like a Witchblade to take advantage of your high damage and slow people down, letting you right click them more. Then you can go something like Hurricane Pike, no joke, just be tanky, hit them far far away with your high damage and your Witchblade attack speed, and, and yeah, you just cook them up. You're gonna have like 2k HP, you're gonna have full mana, full HP, even though you don't have like a real mana regen item, just click Ghost Walk. Oh! All right, getting into the next hero, we have Dark Willow. I don't have a new build per se. I will say that I think you can go Aether Lens now. If I would have to choose one new build to go, the hero didn't change too much, but if you don't know what did change, now you can cast Bedlam, the thing that flies around and does damage, you can cast that on teammates. So let's say your Legion Commander wants to blink in a duel, you can just Bedlam them. Yeah, you heard that right, you can Bedlam your teammates. Uh, that's pretty cool, right? So what does this allow you to do? With Aether Lens, you can do it on them, right? You can cast it on your teammates from really far away. That then means that you don't have to run in and suicide just to do significant amounts of damage. This allows you to cast Curse Crown and Bramble Maze and your ultimate, right, your fear, from really far away, and you can get multiple rounds of spells off. And especially, I recommend taking the level 10 Curse Crown Stun Talent and then Curse Crown AoE at 15. I guess taking Bedlam damage at 15 is more reasonable now, but basically how I see this hero is you can take Bramble Maze cooldown at 20, and it just feels great, right? Then you can also take Curse Crown uh, Shard, right? You can buy the Shard, and that upgrades the Curse Crown, making it spawn Brambles around it when it ends, and it reduces the Stun Blade by one second. So you can kind of just play this hero that's an absolute nuisance from the backline. Right, an absolute nuisance, spamming Curse Crown, Curse Crown, Curse Crown, right? Maybe shooting the occasional Shadow Realm, but really using it primarily as a defensive tool. And I would say primarily just 
maxing the out other abilities, right? I think this is the first time ever where you can feel kind of good about, uh, right, putting four points in Bramble Maze, one point in Shadow Realm, and just using the Shadow Realm defensively, and then maxing out the Cursed Crown and focusing on throwing out stuns and amping up your teammates. You don't need the Shadow Realm to get into the fights and get out now, and so, yeah, you just don't really have to max it per se. From there is Brewmaster. Basically, you gotta try out some different variations of right-click Brewmaster. I don't know what's optimal right now, but I'll tell you what I think might be good. So what I think is good is some sort of in-between variation build. One of the most powerful builds that I talked about in the past being good on Brewmaster is Urn of Shadows, right? Or Spirit Vessel. The reason why is it procs your Cinebrew on people and basically slows them down like crazy. And this got majorly buffed. And I don't mean majorly buffed, I mean MAJORLY buffed. Right, the crown buildup is incredible for Universal Heroes. Previously, right, you would have to go like Vanguard and then disassemble it, and then that would slow down your timings. To be fair, that's kind of not terrible for the hero, considering it would allow you to, uh, you know, have some sustain in the lane. But you can just buy urn, use the charges you get from fighting and killing, or dying now, <laughs> uh, to get charges. So you can go Vessel, and you might be like, oh, I thought you said it's right click. Yeah, this item will just allow you to get to your right click items, because it's first of all going to give you damage, because it gives 12 all stats now on a Universal Hero, right? That's like 24-ish damage. It's more than that. It's like 25. Uh, then you go Midas, right? So you're going to just be able to scale, get your levels, and then go back for Radiance. Yeah, you can go Radiance, right? Because the Radiance works when you Primal Split. And then on top of that, you're going to have a ton of levels, and the Radiance is better now. Why is it better now? What changed about Brew? Well, when you're in your fire stance, you get 25 attack speed. That triples when you're brewed up. So now your hero can just have 75 attack speed with a ton of damage because it's universal and click the hell out of people. This was a major buff and I genuinely think Brewmaster is somewhat of a broken hero. It got extra base damage and this change to the fire stance and the buff to Vessel, the item like one of the main heroes that buys Vessel. I think Brew is hero you're going to have to keep your eyes on and then going some sort of Vessel Midas Radiance build. I have even seen other builds, for instance, someone when Vessel, Mataboots, Midas, Harpoon, BKB, and that's not bad too. Like, I see the logic. There's a lot of ACs in, in, in the items as well, right? There's a lot of different routes you can go. It's definitely a hero to try. From there, we have Drow Shard. This one's simple. Now Drow, if a hero is melee range, can just still use her ultimate. Previously, if a hero was melee range of ult, it would turn off her ultimate, and it would make the hero kind of bad. Now when you summon Glacier, it just negates that effect entirely, which is very bizarre and kind of OP. It means that if a high armor hero gets on top of you, previously you couldn't kill him. Now you just summon the Glacier, you start clicking them, and they're gonna die. It's kind of broken. Like, I'm not just saying that. If people understand how important this is, they'll realize like, wow, I should just get the shard almost as fast as I can. And they go on you, instead of backing out, just pop your BKB or Manta or whatever, and man up on the glacier and you're gonna take him out so yeah the item build that i would recommend going is midas and axe then from there just going some, some something standard like the hurricane pike and then shard right you can even go shard earlier i wouldn't get it necessarily immediately but it's definitely something you can consider i definitely think it's quite op from there is magic damage quap and i actually misunderstood magic damage quap when i was reading the patch notes i thought that the ulti got somewhat nerfed because you could dispel the knockback but jokes on me it said knockback is undispellable. <laughs> I read it completely wrong. And so, <laughs> Quap's just way better now. Like, literally way better. The hero's ultimate just does much more damage now. Instead of doing 310 at level one, it does 350, but that's pure. So it's gonna be the difference in the early game, right? 40 damage is no joke, especially if it's on multiple heroes. At level two, it does 70 more, and at max, it does 100 more. Once again, this is all pure damage. From there, they also buff the radius on Scream of Pain, which is certainly significant. And then they also just buff Dagger at level one, which I wouldn't say is like crazy significant because, well, okay, here's why it is significant. It's because at level two, it's two seconds less, and this is when the ability gets good. It's really not about the level one because level one, honestly, the ability is high mana cost and doesn't do that much. Uh, even though the cooldown is, is three seconds less, it's really about the fact that when you hit level two, it's a two second less cooldown, which might not seem like a big deal, but in the laning stage, I mean, this ability is crazy. You're just going to spam it, spam it, spam it. Um, at least you could, right? If you wanted to, you could just spam it like crazy if the enemy team gives you the opportunity to. So yeah, basically here's the build. In my opinion, it's somewhat simple. Uh, it's kind of what it was in the past, which is just in some sort of Ags variant. So you can go Kai Assange first item if you just want to be tanky right and go from there or you can honestly straight up rush axe if you just want to t do a ton of magic damage early you're gonna max shadow strike and max scream of pain with one point in blink gotta be a little bit careful about how you're blinking 
But then from there, it's really about just getting to Octarine Lincoln's Kyasanch Ags. You want some sort of combination of these items with the Octarine Core and the Ags and then a Kyasanch, Kyasanch for Spell Amp. Hopefully get some sort of neutral item like Van Brace for Spell Amp. And then yeah, you're just spamming Dagger on a three second cooldown. And when you have Ags, when those daggers overlap, they emit a Scream of Pain that is now buffed. And then when you drop your ultimate, which is a, a reduced cooldown due to Octarine and also Spell Amp, it does 650 damage now, and that is damn insane, right? It, it's pretty damn nuts. She already scaled well, now she scales even better, and so yeah, definitely hero to keep in mind. From there, we have Shadow Shaman. I'm gonna keep this one brief. The hero's items didn't change much, but the hero changed a lot. Now when you hex someone at max level, it amps the damage they take by 20%. They also buffed the mana cost on Aether Shock, making you a better laner, and the heal and damage on Shackle, making you a better laner. This hero's a great laner, Hex just straight up amps damage, and so just buy an Aether Lens. Can you go Blink Dagger? Sure. Do I think it's reasonable to try to stay alive and get off multiple Hexes in the team fight with an Aether Lens instead? Yeah, I do think it's quite reasonable, because Hex just straight up amps damage. When you're gonna Hex someone, tell your team and have them all in that person. Why does it amp damage? <laughs> it just amps damage. Also, keep in mind, if you snake trap someone and then hex them, those snakes are just gonna melt the guy, right? They're gonna melt them. All right, getting to the next build is a carry build, and that is Aghanim Scepter Gyrocopter. If you don't know what they changed about Gyro, he has slow resistance during Rocket Barrage. He has uh, more flak range by a ton, 25% more flak range. And when, Aghanim, when you buy Aghanim Scepter and you have Flat Cannon active, the Ags, instead of hitting one extra target, hits two, which is extremely good. It's extremely good. This hero got buff, 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 triple buff. So here's the build. It's pretty simple. You're going to go some sort of stat build up, right? Magic Wand, Wraith Band, then Treads. After Treads, you're going to go Crystalis, which got buffed. It's 50 gold cheaper. After Crystalis, you're going to go Aghanim Scepter. Then from there, you're going to go Satanic. And when you click Satanic, you heal like crazy. Because now, the Ags, when you have Flat Cannon active, hits two targets. So if you get gone on, let's say you get Black Hole, and you click Satanic Flat Cannon, you will not die. You will not die. I assure you. Then you go Daedalus, right? And then from there, it's just kind of whatever you need for the game, right? It could, it could be a late BKB. It could be a Lincoln's. It could be a Butterfly. It could be a second Daedalus, for that matter. It could be a Scotty, right? Whatever you're feeling. From there, we have Jakiro Agnims. This build is just, this, I mean, this spell now is nuts. If you haven't seen it, I don't even feel like I need to say much if you have seen it, but if you haven't seen it, it just summons a thick ass macro pyre. All right, this thing is so thick, it's crazy. And then there's just a invoker ice walls on the edge and you can't get out of it. It does so much damage, pure damage. You can't get out of it, right? And then it's it sets up for your ice path and your other spells incredibly well. So here's the build I recommend you go. Um, I think there's some different items. I personally recommend going Veil. I think this item is better than ever. If the enemy team clicks Glimmer or Pipe, you can just do 200 damage to the Glimmer or Pipe with the Veil and then layer all your Jakiro Nyx, right? So I recommend, personally, I'm a big fan of the Veil. I like going Veil into Ags and just damage it up. Who needs defensive items? Just, just chuck out a billion instances of damage. And yes, Veil does amp uh, pure damage. So it's, it's great. And finally, the last build of the list is Sand King Aghanim Scepter. Yes, Sand King got buffed and this hero's win rate skyrocketed. Like truly, it skyrocketed. It is the highest win rate hero in Dota. It's the highest win. How is Sand King? Sand King, a hero I haven't seen in years. Even though I've been actually recommended playing it. No one picks it in high MMR. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it real. And I think kind of for good reason, but they, they buffed it hard. If you don't know what they changed, basically they buffed the Axe, but most importantly, they buffed Sandstorm. What they buffed about Sandstorm is you can move the Sandstorm. Whatever direction you are in the sandstorm, let's say you're in the top of the sandstorm, it will move up at 100 units per second. It's not very fast, but it makes the difference because now you can simply bring the sandstorm to chase people and do extra damage. And it really does make all of the difference. It makes a huge, huge difference. It's so noticeable. It's better for farming because you can like move your sandstorm to hit different camps. It's way better in team fights. It's better for disengaging. To be fair, it kind of tells people where you are in the sandstorm. That's the only thing. So like, I guess you got to be careful about that because like if it's moving left he's on the left <laughs> See, that is something to be aware of but uh yeah you go axe right you go axe uh, i think there's a lot of different builds you can go you honestly could go something like spear vessel because this hero uh is indeed a universal hero and you can just become really tanky and hit pretty hard i've seen some sort of uh vessel into blink into echo saber and you just slow them with a vessel and sandstorm 
And that's pretty cool. Uh, and then from there you buy an axe. Because the axe, if you don't know what it does, it basically shoots out burrow strikes in the sandstorm. And now those those burrow strikes are based on sandstorm radius. And you have a sandstorm radius talent at level 15, which buffs it. And so you just hit stun, stun, stun. And it stuns them for the full duration. It really stuns a lot. And you have a stun talent at 10 if you want to take that too to really buff it up. It's pretty nuts to see this hero as one of the top heroes. I think it's mainly because it's team fight on its Ags timing is unbelievable. I will say I think the higher MMR you are, the worse the hero is to be perfectly blunt, but I definitely think the hero has a lot of potential. Like at minimum, it has a lot of potential because also you can just go like double bracer. Uh, a Vanguard build in the off lane is fine as well. It's probably pretty reasonable because this hero sort of needs to just sit in the lane. All in all, what I recommend you do, get an Aghanim Scepter at some point. The Shard is also better now, uh, from what I've seen. The Shard is better, the Ags is better. It's it's just a cool hero, I'm telling you. There's definitely something there. But alright, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel as I'm going to be making full length guides on different heroes you can play and how to play them. Specifically, how to play them in the upcoming days. Very excited for this patch. It's been a ton of fun reviewing it just up until now. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.